Hello everybody, good afternoon uh, on this beautiful Tuesday and in our event, the third uh, International Positive Education Marathon, which is devoted to artificial intelligence in education. So my name is Blanca Tatzer. I'm from STEP Institute and from uh, Primera Courses. So today's event is organized uh, by different institutions uh, which are STEP Institute, uh, Primera Courses, and also Positive Psychology. Uh, we have many participants here from different European countries, but I think that most of them are coming from Romania and from Slovenia, also uh, from other Mediterranean countries and Central European countries. Uh, warmly welcome, everybody. Uh, okay, so uh, let's see maybe the first some of the basics before we go to uh, introduce the program. Uh, for those of you who would like to check maybe automatic translations of the event, because this event is in English, obviously, but you can try auto translation options if you want. Uh, in this case, you have to go to the YouTube channel uh, and uh, you will see down there CC options and then you click on them and in the settings you choose your preferred language. I tried it and it worked quite well, uh, but you try probably the quality of the translation is different from different languages. If you will see that the translation is not a very good quality, then you can uh, maybe just set to the subtitles and it will be easier to follow. So that's just our suggestion. Okay, what's uh, today in our program? Uh, we will see. Uh, we are having four uh, contributions uh, with four speakers that have a really good experience with artificial intelligence. Our first contribution will be uh, delivered by Christian Zemlich uh, with the contribution on artificial uh, AI powered classrooms, empowering the next generation teacher for success. Then uh, Olivia Jaegers will come with unleashing the potential of AI in the classroom. Uh, in, uh, then Uros Ocepek will follow with artificial intelligence as a teacher magic wand. And in the end, Zala Blitzel is coming, AI in education, the impact and the possibilities of re imaging education. So that's uh, the program for today's event. Uh, and uh, this event would not be possible without uh, the support of Erasmus Plus. Erasmus Plus and by project that is devoted to bots and artificial intelligence in today's work environment. So now I will invite to the stage my co-worker, my very uh, uh -huh, here, uh, my co-worker that uh, we worked together for several years, Yernea, uh, and she is one of the team members of the uh, BI project. So can you tell us a little bit about the project before we start with the program? Of course. Thank you, Blanka, and welcome, everybody. Hello from Ljubljana, from Slovenia. Um, and let's just jump to, to our uh, great BI project. Uh, by bots and artificial intelligence is an Erasmus Plus project that responds to the needs of European workers who already see or will soon see how their work environments are getting transformed by the emergence of the artificial intelligence. And the main objective of the project is to support them in this process in developing the necessary skills that they need to efficiently deal with the challenges, of course, that AI at work can, can bring. And within the project, we first created a case study report. And this report illustrates the current situation in participating countries, 
uh, in the processes of incorporating AI and also robotics in European companies. Uh, so the participating countries of the project are P Poland, Portugal, Italy, Spain, Turkey, and um, Slovenia. Uh, and this report includes uh, specific examples presented by the protagonists uh, on how these incorporation processes have impacted the company as well as the workers. Uh, the information collected uh, is available as a written report, but it is complemented by video testimonials that are available on our uh, project's YouTube uh, channel. The second result of the project uh, is the training on AI literacy and key soft skills that will address the development of the skills that employees need to better function in the environment, work in environment where humans, robots, and AI can coexist and uh, also create an added value. Um, the training is divided in four modules, and it is already available on the project's website in English, and soon it will also be available in other languages, six languages uh, of the participating um, uh, countries. So we warmly invite you to uh, visit our project website to check the social media and uh, learn more and uh, use your curiosity to, to explore uh, the, the contents, the, this area that also we explored uh, in the project. Uh, and of course, if you have any questions, uh, you can always uh, write to us and we will be happy in our team to, to respond and create something together maybe in the future. So this is very shortly from me. Uh, I am happy to be here and uh, looking forward to our presenters. So thank you, Blanca. Thank you very much, Yernea. Uh, yeah, of course, all the presentations will be uh, available in the Facebook group, Pan-European Conference on Digital Education. So if you want to follow the presentation, just go and uh, on the Facebook group and uh, follow the presentation over there. Uh, it's here, yeah, it's also on the slide. We will also put uh, the link to the Facebook group in the comments so that uh, you will just simply click on them. Okay, now I believe that you would like to meet our presenters, so who they are uh, and what they are doing. Uh, so I will ask first, just a second, I also manage the technical aspects of this event, so that's why something uh, sometimes I'm a little bit slow, but we will manage. Uh, okay, so welcome, Christian. Christian is our first presenter. Uh, he works with artificial intelligence quite intensively, especially in the training of others how to use it and with uh, uh, grant writing, right? Exactly. Uh, so, yeah. But uh, anyway, tell us a little bit about yourself. We okay, so hello everyone. Uh, thank you, Blanca, for <laughs> uh, inviting me to this beautiful event. And uh, you're pretty well with managing all these technical aspects, I must say. Um, anyway, uh, I'm representing Global Disruption, which is brand and uh, a team basically behind who is uh, mostly doing with innovation and funding in general. So um, in the past, we were mostly focused on working with deep tech and high tech companies uh, and institutions of knowledge like research institutions, uh, universities, uh, schools, and so on, where our main intention was to further develop and bring any kind of innovations uh, to broader public. Now, in last recent years, uh, of course, we dipped very dive into this AI, uh, which obviously not just a buzz, but something that uh, obviously will stay and stick with us. Uh, we went mm -hmm. pretty deep into that. Uh, uh, must say that uh, upgraded our skills in this uh, uh, aspect and started to uh, efficiently implement it in our daily workflow. Not just grant writing, where of course it was our first primary uh, objective because you know not just hours but weeks can be saved 
but also in other aspects of our work, like marketing, day-to-day -day, uh, ad administrative, let's say administrative tasks and so on. Um, and based on that experience, we developed a few trainings, uh, already trained over 100 and more uh, experts from around, uh, well, countries from all over the Europe, uh, but at least from 70 to 80 institutions. Uh, and um, yeah, I'm very eager about the topic, uh, maybe even too much into it. Uh, could talk for hours <laughs> about it. And my kids say, come on, Dad, please stop. Uh, but uh, again, very happy to be here. And uh, hopefully I will share some insights with you that can you know, improve the way how you see and use AI. I'm sure you will. Yeah, so there are already 200 participants with us today, <laughs> eager to know more about artificial intelligence in education. Okay, Olivia, welcome. So Olivia is uh, initially from Germany, but she works as a digital nomad, right? So traveling, you are global citizens, citizen of the world. Yes, uh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you so much for inviting me. I'm so happy to be here with so many experts on, on such cool stuff like AI and positive psychology. So, right, Blanca um, already said that I'm from Germany. I'm a global citizen. Um, right now I'm in Germany. I'm flying in two days into Bulgaria. I'm a positive psychologist, I might say. I'm involved with positive psychology since 17 years already. and um, have combined this now with my mm. new, my, with my recent love for AI. Um, and yeah, and I educate people in both. I'm lecturer at a university in Germany since three years for positive psychology. And yeah, I'm occasionally um, educating people in AI as well, how to leverage them. It's for their own needs. That's what I, that's what I do. And that's what I hope to do today for you guys too. Thank you so much. Definitely. Thank you. Looking forward. Uh, okay, and Uroš is here. So Uroš is uh, one of the best teachers from Slovenia. He was even awarded last year with the Global Teacher Prize. And I think that you are also among the finalists for this year, right? Yeah, so yes. <laughs> stick our fingers crossed. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, I'm just a teacher. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, I'm a computer science teacher, uh, especially I teach uh, coding and also artificial intelligence as part of our school curriculum since uh, 2018. So I'm also uh, a PhD from a computer science. Uh, I'm trying my best to involve artificial intelligence in different aspects of teaching. So I will show you in the further lecture. <laughs> yes, uh, I'm looking forward to all of your examples. Uh, I had the privilege to already see your presentation. So yeah, <laughs> I, yeah looking forward. And Zala Britzel is here. She works very intensively with teachers uh, as a teacher trainer, among others. And she's focused on internet safety. Uh, I mean, not just that, but among others, I think this is one of the important topic and you put a lot of focus on that, which is really great. So you encourage uh, using technology, but in a safe way. So I admire that. Uh, but tell us maybe a little bit more about you. Hi, everybody. Buna, salut, uh, pozdrav svima. Um, my name is Ala Britzel. Uh, I combine two worlds, uh, marketing and social media, and of course, education, which is, I think, uh, the profession I enjoy in the sense of uh, do what you love, love what you do. Uh, I work and train and educate in the field of digital and media literacy, which I think are the skills uh, that we need to future-proof our students and children. Uh, and uh, of course, I am always um, um, technology-oriented. Uh, that's why AI is also on my radar. Uh, and uh, I love um, figuring out new tools. I love working with uh, collaborative tools. And uh, I can't wait to hear all of my colleagues uh and uh to follow this discussion and talk to you later a bit 
Thank you very much uh, for uh, your presentation. So now we will just start because the hour is two. Uh, we will see each other later. So at the moment, I will just put here Christian because uh, he is the first. Uh, before we start, I would just like to tell you about the certificates of attendance. So if you want to have a certificates of attendance for this event, you will see a link in the chat. Uh, later, we will also put that link in the video description. So follow that link. Put your name and surname and very important that you uh, type in precisely your email address. So uh, then later you will receive the certificate of attendance. Uh, uh, it might happen that uh, you receive it immediately, but it might happen that you will receive in half an hour. It depends on the amount of demand. Uh, and you will get it. So the link will be active for 24 hours. And so if you don't manage to request the certificate now, you can do it later as well. Uh, okay, so and there are some comments about the subtitles on YouTube. Uh, yeah, I believe that maybe you have different settings on your computer. So maybe it might happen that it uh, in some of the computer subtitles doesn't work, but in some of them they work. So uh, it was just our suggestions to use it. So just check maybe with your settings or uh, if you will see the recordings of the event, you can turn on the captions later. Uh, that's right. So, okay. Um, we have now um, uh, just a second. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, that's Christian, as you know. Uh, so he will have the first presentation. Uh, okay. And uh, his topic is uh, AI powered classrooms, empowering the next generation teacher for success. Uh, he will uh, introduce five topics. So, uh, and here they are like, what are the traits of next generation teacher? Then five different cases of using uh, artificial intelligence. Then three tools for improved teacher productivity. Then also it's important to discuss uh, equity and inclusivity in artificial intelligence and the future of teaching. Okay, so Christian, welcome on stage. If you have any questions for Christian, welcome. Put them in the chat. We will ask him after his presentation. So, yeah, be mindful and, uh, yeah, we are in your hands now. Thank you so much, Blanca. Just uh, give me um, a second that I share my screen. That and You uh, share the screen, yeah. Let me know if you can, you know, hear me. So I want yeah, to we hear you uh, like this and this. So do you see my presentation? Mm -hmm. We have it here. All right. So then let's rock and roll. Mm, I just yes. have to set my clock on so I'm not too long. Um, anyway, thanks again for inviting me and giving me this opportunity to speak some uh, about AI and how you could possibly implement it in your working environment. Uh, now we have this really interesting topic called AI powered classroom and how to empower the next generation teacher. And, um, you know, I turned 46 yesterday and um, I, most of my professional career, I'm working with the high tech and deep tech uh, innovations. Yet it never occurred to me that my new co-worker could actually be AI. It just didn't occur to me. And because the reason why I'm so fascinated is because I remember when I got my first uh, personal computer or PC uh, back in uh, primary school. And of course, this was something completely different. It was new technology, immersive, uh, and obviously a bit addictive as well. Uh, as you can probably, uh, this would what my parents would tell you. Anyway, many years uh, went by and we didn't see such a significant progress in terms of new impactful uh, technology. 
uh, at least for me, until I started going to university when I was introduced to two uh, breakthroughs. And one was meeting the internet and the other one was mobile phones. Now, I know many who are probably younger than myself think, oh my God, what a dinosaur. But at the time, this was really breakthrough because it changed everything, how we how we studied, how we started to communicate, how we work today. Basically, the whole world became one global village and it just fundamentally changed everything. And then from this last decade, for example, was again more, let's say, quiet. So we saw a lot of progress in the, for different technologies, but no real uh, impact for breakthroughs that would really um, impact the society in general, like AI. Now, last year, suddenly it appeared suddenly, if it, it was not like that, but it appeared like that, uh, AI emerged and obviously it touched everyone and each of, one, uh, each of us. So probably most of you noticed that to start using it, it's not very difficult. I mean, at least the first version of ChatGPT, for example, if that was your first touch with it, was really, uh, you know, straightforward to use. And with just some little tips and tricks, you know, you can do magical things. For example, I used it to brainstorm this uh, session. I used it to outline what to say during this session. Uh, most of the images were created with AI. So all this was just not possible, uh, or at least not at this uh, speed and quality uh, just a year ago. Mm, however, AI, and this is one of my key messages during uh, this, our session, is uh, is a tool. It's, it's our co-pilot. So it's on us that we review and examine whatever AI uh, produces. And for example, this uh, session you or you and I are sharing now, you know, AI put the bones together, but it's on me to put the meat on it. So uh, it's really this kind of cooperation. Anyway, ahead of us is short but sweet journey, and we will touch, as already Blanca said, impact on us, and we will explore briefly the next generation teacher, few use cases, AI tools, a bit of ethics and inclusivity, and we will spend a few words on the coming AI generation. Now, let's face it, all we hear about lately is AI. I mean, regardless whether you are uh, watching TV, scrolling internet, uh, whether you are surfing social media, it's just everywhere, you know, either uh, news about it or some tools about it. But let's face it, AI is present with us for quite some time. It's, it's heavily present in all kinds of industries because machines and these artificial brains can uh, execute several tasks much more precise and, and, you know, in a stable uh, manner than human can. Mm. On the other side, AI is also present in our most sacred places like home through different widgets and gadgets and all types of machines we are using. And of course, it's quite obvious that it's entering the educational arena. So it's stepping into our classrooms. Uh, the question is only how exactly and what is the impact that, uh, you know, we are going to witness. Now, all this happening first felt like, like a buzz. Uh, many thought it's just a high, but it's quite obvious that AI is here to stay and it's on us to learn how to use it. But the speed of development is, is really, it's enormous. It's uh, something we probably never experienced before. And as a result, it can be a bit over overwhelming. So I can speak for myself when I started to explore, for example, ChatGPT, and when just I thought that I know something about it, it, you know, suddenly then I discovered Bing, then Bart, then Claude, then another Claude, and a new version of chat. So it was just like, oh my God, I cannot keep up with all this. Um, I'm subscribed to several newsletters on different AI tools. And basically every single day you have an email saying, 10 new 
eight AI tools for these, 10 new AI tools for that. And for some times I was building up my library and once I hit 2000 tools, I said, okay, it's enough. I just cannot follow this anymore. It's too much of everything. I need to focus, pick one thing, learn it, and then see if I can, you know, put some other tools into some small but manageable ecosystem. And this is also something that we will try to do together today. Now, on the other side, we have this news, like 3 million jobs could be affected or replaced by AI. Of course, this doesn't help us really. It, it just adds, let's say, some salt on our wounds uh, and adds uh, to additional pressure because who doesn't worry? Like, what does it mean for me? And I actually dig uh, into this study, actually several of those, but for example, this one from Goldman Sachs, uh, can easily reveal to you that you can expect that 27 to 30 percent of our tests could be, you know, delegated to AI and automated. So that's, of course, putting our professional existence under question. Like, what's waiting for us? Mm, are we done? <laughs> now, this is the question I get <laughs> often. So does it mean that we need to become some kind of cyborgs, half human, half robots? And luckily, the answer to this question is no, we don't have to, of course not. But let's make no mistake. So another study from uh, Harvard Business School and Boston Consulting Group showed that, uh, let's say, knowledge workers who are working AI, and in this uh, particular study they were using GPT-4, well, they were much more productive. They finished 12% more tasks, they were much faster, and 40% of this trial group delivered higher quality results. Now, as you can imagine, this is possibly the, a new norm, maybe not today, but in a year or two, we can expect that this will be like uh, some norms that we will be uh, expected to achieve. So it's on us to adapt and evolve. Luckily, other studies show there is also a bright side of this. And for example, you see another uh, graphs from Boston Consulting Group, uh, which uh, to summarize, basically show that more we know about AI, more optimistic we feel about it. And vice versa is also true. So less we know, more pessimistic uh, we are about it. Uh, why this is like that? Well, basically because once you understand how AI works, you're pretty well aware of what it can, but also what it cannot do. And knowing this, you can better evaluate where is your value and where are some tests that actually make sense that AI takes over because you can produce something else. So there is a bright future for us, I would say. Now, this brings us closer to education arena, I mean, what does it mean uh, in this uh, aspect? Well, let's make no mistake. There are countries who are not only developing uh, or talking about AI curricula, but they're actually developing it, endorsing it, and even implementing it already. So this is a, a, a screenshot, for basically two screenshots from UNESCO report. Uh, I really recommend reading it. It's uh, highly insightful. But on the right side, you can see uh, just a few countries, uh, I couldn't put all uh, on this slide, that are quite successful in introducing their AI curricula across diff uh, the different educational levels from primary to high school. Now, in order to be able to do that, you need empowered teachers, someone who can execute such AI curricula. And another interesting part of this report is outlined and described AI literacy competency framework. So basically competencies that teachers will have to further develop in order to be empowered uh, and able to execute and implement such AI curricula. Now, if you will read this uh, competency framework more in details, you can easily learn that it's uh, written very wisely. Basically, it, it applies to most of us, and I believe that in the years that are coming, most of us will have to uh, develop and upgrade our competency 
framework uh, in, in terms of AI. Now, why this all matters? Well, there is a discussion about jobs of the future. And this future is actually, it's here. And, uh, you know, for many, this discussion seems a bit abstract, like what these jobs actually are. And, you know, it's, is it something very concrete or not? And let's stop for a second and, and look back for, let's say, 10 years. Now, when I did the research, uh, when I was preparing for this uh, session, I tried to find a few, few professions that didn't exist or were very rare at the time, 10 years ago. And, and on the left side, you can see some of them, uh, which are very common today, like social media influencer, blockchain an analyst, telemedicine physician, drone operator, e-sport game coach. I mean, all these kind of professions were just not existing. And yet here they are today. And it's really amazing that someone can, for example, make money by creating content for YouTube, TikTok, or Udemy classes, if we are talking about teaching. Now, on the other side, we need to look forward. And it's quite obvious that uh, there are new needs and these will result in new professions. And just to, to list a few, and this uh, slide is basically taken from my dear colleague, Alex Peos from Technology Park of Ljubljana, uh, very active in this field. But you can see, for example, space miner or space tourism guide or climate change reversal specialist. So all these professions are completely new, not existing. They will, they will need new competencies, new knowledge, new skill set, new tools and teachers or educators in general. We, we need to be ready to help to you know grow these new professionals. Now I will specifically touch also about touch the virtual teacher as you can see and does it mean that this virtual teacher is some kind of robot replacing uh, the let's say normal teacher? Well obviously not. It just means that the concept of teaching will most likely undergo some fundamental change as well. Um, there are some think, 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 thinkings and considerations in behind um, that, you know, physical presence to deliver teaching or to consume teaching will no longer be needed. That means that everything will go online, not just online, like we were used to maybe using Zoom or platforms like this, but using virtual reality, mixed reality and so on. So it's really on us to start preparing for this transition because the speed of development is really outstanding. Now, this brings us to our concept of the next generation teacher. Now, as mentioned earlier, this teacher is, is not a robot or semi-robot. It's normal human being, but AI literate. What I mean by that? Well, I mean that the fundamental role of such teacher will be a bit different not being just someone who you know, delivers the knowledge, uh, but also is or is mostly focused on facilitating learning or accelerating learning, being more mentor uh, to its pupils and students and so on. In practical terms, this could mean that, for example, it will not check whether kids are cheating, cheating if they use AI to write their uh, you know, homework, but they, that it will actually teach them how to use AI in an ethical way to solve problems, to prepare for lessons, and then how to engage into more complex uh, problem solving with their own mind. Now, on the other side, this teacher is AI competent, meaning it can most likely operate or use different language models, different AI tools, uh, maybe knows a different, even some AI prompting techniques and so on. Now, in front of you, I have listed five use cases, but I could list many more to be very honest. Uh, but let's let's stick with these five for the sake of presentation. So, imagine that you have that you're finally your own boss. You have several employees, AI employees, ready for you 24/7, and they can help you with very different tasks for a very simple administrative task, 
which are time consuming and, and you know, repetitive, um, but also on more constructive and even, uh, let's say, deep reasoning uh, exercises that you need to do at your work. So here you can see five use cases that range from uh, AI, let's say, agent that can help you with administrative uh, tasks, less planning your lessons, grading your uh, exams, preparing for tests, or even define or find and analyze knowledge gaps. Now, you might say, okay, Christian, this is super. It's, you know, inspiring. I would love to have such assistant helping me solve my everyday problems, you know, uh, deal with, let's say, administration or emails from angry parents or so on. Um, but can we go more deep into practice and see if this can really work? And I'm glad that you asked. Well, I imagine you asked because this is exactly what we are going to do. Now, let's start with our first use case. And that is our AI, let's say, agent or coworker helping us with administration. Now, I said change is the only constant. What, what did I mean by that? Well, for example, my parents, they use typewriter. We are using laptops or computers of any kind in our kids and, and you know, younger generation, they mostly use tablets and phones. What is common to all of us that we are typing? But why would we type, for example, if we can talk? Now, this is a very simple and a very easy to implement AI productivity tip for your uh, let's say daily work. AI is uh, heavily present between us and technology you can immediately start using is voice to text. Now, what does it mean? Well, next time you will have a meeting or something like that, you just open your word and find your, this microphone, it's circled with a red uh, line and, you know, just open it, set it to your language and start talking, you know. It does it, it writes down your words perfectly without mistakes. Uh, I, I was really surprised to, to learn that and the way how I use it or, and the way how you can use it. And also the example is done this way is as follows. Let's say that you have a brainstorming session with your colleagues. So what you do, you're discussing different aspects of some, uh, you know, issue that you have at hand. So you just open the document you dictate whatever comes to your mind. You don't worry about grammar, structure, uh, is it bold, italic, where is comma, full stop, and so on. You just, we call this brain dump, whatever is on your mind. Why? Because then this is the magic part. You take this text, you open, for example, ChatGPT, GP3, uh, the version free, which is for free, um, and you copy paste this text inside and you say, chat, you are my administr administrative support. Read this text, write an email, structure it, you know, divide, divide a task per each colleague and prepare an email for me. And within seconds, you have everything done, you know. It's uh, easy to implement. It doesn't require any uh, money. You just, all you have to do is do it. That's all. Mm. Or let's say that you need to read very long reports or documents uh, where you need to find specific information and so on. Uh, what you can do is, for example, use this tool. It's called Chat with Any PDF. So it's again free. Uh, I don't have any affiliates with that. I just use it myself. This is why I recommend it to you as well. And what you can do is just upload the document of your interest and start asking questions like, where is what is this uh, paragraph about or can you find this specific information or if you upload several documents compare can you pre compare previous version to a new one and explain uh, what, what were the changes so it feels much more natural you get your answers instantly and you know uh, shortens your time spent on different um, education uh, pardon administrative tasks because if there is one thing AI language models can do, they can analyze texts very well. They can understand the context, the structure, the sentiment of writer, and you can use it in very creative ways 
So I will give you a hint, which is not on the on the presentation. That is, if you have, let's say, an email which is important to you, and you want to, you know, reply in, in a good way, uh, then run it through ChatGPT, for example, make it analyze the text and ask it to suggest you how could you reply, for example, uh, if the person on the other side is upset and you want to calm it down and suggest something constructive and things like that. So options are unlimited. Now, preparation for lessons also takes a lot of time. Also for this session, for example, takes a lot of time. So we are used to using Google and similar um, web browsers, but I suggest at least this tool, which is called Perplexity AI, which is your, like it states, your free researcher. Now, why I like it? Well, obviously it's for free, but secondly, it gives you instant results, which are powered by the most powerful ChatGPT free and four and even cloud. Uh, but what is most important is that whatever it gives you as a result, it also links back to sources. So, for example, I asked it, which are the biggest challenges that teachers have to deal with? And it listed out these, let's say, 10 or even more uh, challenges teachers have. Now, it's really <laughs> on you. You will validate for me if this is correct or not. But what I can do then is actually go and visit the sources for this of this information, read it, and then, you know, if it's correct, use it for my further work. So this is a really helpful tool when you're preparing for your classes. What about if you're planning a lesson? Well, this is really interesting stuff. Just a few days ago, ChatGPT uh, launched a new, or OpenAI launched a new feature in ChatGPT, and that is uh, AI vision to text. What does it mean? So let's say that you are uh, a teacher in physics who wants to prepare an engagement, engaging class. So what you can do is, let's say, upload your image into ChatGPT and ask it, as you can see below, to describe the image layer by layer. And it will, you know, study the image and write it out really in details, like what it sees in the middle ground, background, ceiling, floor, and so on. And you can say, okay, this is a great thing. I mean, uh, but how can I use it further? Well, what you can do further is write a simple prompt to AI and say, okay, AI, now you act as an experienced physics teacher and you're famous for your ability to engage students. Now, see the image and the context I provided you above and suggest me how could I set up my classroom, you know, to make it more engaging. And AI will give you some suggestions. Now, not all will be gold, of course not, but it will give you some ideas how you can approach what you can do with what you have, you know. And this is just a start because this is where your creativity kicks in because once you have this context, you can ask it different questions like, um, ask it which experiments you could include in your uh, in your lesson based on what you have, or which fun related tasks could students do to prepare for the class, or how you could simplify your explanation of complex uh, topic just simply by stating, please explain this topic uh, in a language of I don't know, ten years old, twelve years old, depends on on the context. Regardless. You can use it in many different ways. Uh, as you can see, I actually took the description and power use it into uh, ChatGPT to say, please now make an image of this setup so I can just imagine what this could look like. Now, maybe you don't have an access to ChatGPT, or at least the paid version. So here are alternative solutions. You can use BART, which is for free. Uh, you can see on the top right corner, it's basically very similar, uh, on, at least on the first glance, similar tool. You just upload your image and you can ask it. And for example, I did it for our course we are offering to kids, uh, also developed and supported by uh, Erasmus Plus on entrepreneurship. Or you can use uh, another tool, which is called Bing Image Creator. You, know, you can see on the left side, 
and the images on the right when you can you know just by using simpler words like right do me an image in a uh, topic of ai in education and voila it's there now somebody might ask well is it worth to pay money for ChatGPT or any other tool or not? And it really depends on how heavy user you are. For daily tasks, free version is more than enough. If you use it uh, a lot, then probably it makes sense because you have all the tools under one roof. Uh, I don't look at this as a subscription. I'm just looking at this like if I pay, let's say, $20, how many hours can I get back? Because I can spend these hours on training for myself or spending time with my family, doing sports or some other stuff. Now, last but not least, uh, and another example, let's say for assessing uh, uh, gra or giving grades to your, your students. Now, I don't suggest that, you, that AI does it for you, but imagine that you have this big, huge pile of or exams you have to go through so what you can do basically is just ask ai to say okay analyze this text and these are the rules now please go for, for through each of the text and suggest per student what are his strengths what are his weaknesses and recommendations how what he should do or she should do to improve um, her skills uh, in this area but don't think that I'm just you know, talking in theory, because if we refer to Ministry of Education in Singapore, for example, they launched such language feedback assistant uh, designed for students who are learning English. And this technology, AI technology, is help giving them instant feedback on like things like spelling, grammar, and so on, while teachers work on more complex uh, challenges with these students in person. Very briefly, because I see we're running out of time, uh, ethics and data security, also inclusivity. Well, AI per se is inclusive, so uh, by default, there is, uh, you can, uh, at least here, everyone can take part. But regarding ethics and data security, let's, let's put it this way. Do not share what is sensitive and confidential. And for a start, you're good to go you know so don't share anything you wouldn't share otherwise publicly mm -hmm. but with your daily operations uh, at least for now um, you know i think so many uh, companies and schools and, and universities are already using it that i believe there is a use case for you as well now our future are we going to be replaced by robots but at least in near future, I believe that not. But I believe that near future already belongs to Generation AI. And while many think that Generation AI is yet to come, so from next year and years to come, I believe that Generation AI is already here. Because for the first time, I think this is not framed by years of when you were born, but basically it's more about our mindset. So what can I do with AI? about our knowledge, uh, where we, when we want to know how it works, our skill set and competencies. Like I said, I'm Generation X, but I most also feel that I'm Generation AI. And considering that you are here too, I am pretty sure that you are one of the first members of Generation AI as well. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attention and I will happy answer all of your questions. Thank you very much, Christian. Uh, if we would be in the event uh, in the classroom or a conference room, you would get a big applause. But now let's say just congratulations to uh, your session. Um, can you tell us uh, about, you know, you mentioned IA voice, uh, mm -hmm. so translating uh, voice to text. Uh, how does it work in different languages? Does it work only in English or also in other languages? It works in really several languages. Uh, now we are talking about Word, okay, Word. But it also mm -hmm. works, uh, let's say, in Office package. So you can open PowerPoint, Word. I didn't try it on Excel, but for example, when I was outlining this PowerPoint presentation, you know, I had my ideas, what I want to talk about. I just opened this microphone and dictated 
what was in my mind. Uh, but you can set up the language. So obviously, if we want to narrate, give uh, some dictation in Slovenian, but it's put in English, it will write down very weird stuff. But uh, if you dictate in English and it's set up in English or German or Spanish or Romanian and so on, it will work perfectly, really perfectly. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Thank you very much, Christian. So we move uh, further on with the next presentation. Thank you very much. So now we have uh, 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 with us uh, Olivia again, uh, which you met before. Uh, so Olivia will uh, uh, share with us uh, the topic Unleashing the Potential of AI. Uh, she's a psychologist, so she will add a little bit of perspective also on the growth mindset and how can we instill uh, a growth mindset in students with the help of artificial intelligence. How can we co foster critical thinking in my students? Uh, she will also ask uh, herself and uh, think about what if they cheat uh, and provide some ideas about that. Uh, and how can uh, artificial intelligence empower teachers in our daily work? Uh, how can we uh, increase creativity, originality, <laughs> consideration? Did I tell everything? You told everything and more. <laughs> and more <laughs> all right so uh yeah the floor is yours uh as uh, uh without further ado yeah thank you very much okay yes thank you so much um again for welcoming me here um if i sometimes look here then um it's because you are there actually is can you see my presentation now uh yes in a second yes Ares. okay now cool. yeah now <laughs> exactly. we exactly amazing okay thank you so much yes invite for inviting me here um i'm very very happy to be here welcome to everyone to my talk about uh, gpt4 in the classroom i'm also very happy and excited to have heard uh, christian's talk before and um also really cool to see that we have very similar take-home messages um so yeah i hope you enjoy my my presentation as well um yeah so i'm a psychologist i'm coming from that side i'm not in the technical part but i'm a big ai enthusiast for sure i have tried out so many things um in the past year um preferably and when the big wave started christian mentioned it as well i was like i was right there <laughs> Um, so, of course, you will know that this can be just a short introduction and overview a quick example of what I can provide in the 20, 25 minutes. But I really hope this will pique your interest and um, curiosity and hopefully even motivates you to try things on your own. And obviously, I could go on for hours here in this topic. I really love this and I'm super excited about this. But nevertheless, we see what we will. Um, pack into this time. Um, yeah, so let's dive in. Okay, cool. So that's a quote I found from the World Economic Forum from the um, founder and executive chairman, Klaus Schwab. And he said, um, in the 21st century, the capacity to continuously learn and apply and integrate new knowledge will be the key competency. Every child should be inspired and empowered to be a lifelong learner. That is so what I think as well. And I appreciate it um, to hear it from, from the economical side as well, which means that, OK, even they understand um, learning is, is really, really important and lifelong learning is really, really important. And then I thought, why not? cooperating with AI here and create a new quote, which is um, which which includes the growth mindset as well. So GPT-4 and me, we created, we co-created this quote saying in the AI era, a growth mindset is our wings and lifelong learning is our power. And together they let us not just keep pace with machines, but harness 
the potential to elevate our own, which I think is, yeah, is really true. So first of all, when Blanca invited me to this conference, I, uh, I asked, okay, so who's the audience? And she said, oh, you know, it can be like the teachers, it can be any age um, that, 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 that they teach and it can be, um, it's so divergent. I was like, okay, cause that's cool. But I don't know even if we all start on the same page. So I just wanted to include really quick what I actually mean when talking about AI. Um, so some call it the fourth industrial revolution, right? Um, Christian mentioned it as well. It's a real transformation. Um, like when computers were coming into the offices, Christian mentioned the, the smartphones as well. Um, or the internet was available to everyone. That's really, really uh, a big thing. And maybe you can just write in the comments who has tried out ChatGPT before or something similar. There are multiple other large language models, um, large language learning models. And maybe you can write it in the comments. And here's just here is just um, what I mean when I refer to AI. It's the LLMs, it's uh, the generative AI, which means it's, it's artificial intelligence, which generates things like text, video, um, images, other things. And you all got the slides, so you can read later more if you're interested, but just to start from the same page, I put this description here. Oh, and also something I want to quickly um, quickly underline it's prompt engineering. What is a prompt? Because we will talk about that later. Um, a prompt is in general just what that, like the sentence you tell the AI what to do next for you. So Christian also gave us some examples. We will come to another example as well. And prompt engineering sounds so technical, but it's actually just just like you prompt, like it's it's the science of prompting, but you can just start. That's what Christian's message was as well. I'm happy to refer so much to Christian's because it was a really good talk and really exciting talk as well. Exactly, so also we were talking about growth mindset and coming here as a psychologist and as a positive psychologist, it's very, um, it's very important to me that we talk about growth mindset as well. And just also to start here on the same page, I want to take you with me and um, just quickly define it again. So a growth mindset, and I, I think this picture really shows it very well, just actually obviously made by AI and me. Um, Growth mindset is the belief that intelligence and abilities can be developed over time with hard work and effort. And as we all know, fostering a growth mindset in students is leading to higher motivation, um, more confidence, better performance, and more happy students. And that's what we like, right? I like them for sure. Um, it's that they will embrace challenges better and view failure um, more as a learning experience than actual a failure. And they are also learning resilience and persistence when facing a setback. And as we all do know as well, it's very important to, in order to foster a growth mindset, to emphasize the effort over the, the talent or the actual outcome, in fact, to help our students to embrace this and also, you know, allow them to fail. And um, when I remember in my classes, and obviously it's, it's, it might be very different than in yours because I have the students and psychology students and um, they wanna be there, they wanna learn stuff. But we had um, this term of mistake friendliness and maybe you have heard about this before. It means, well, we welcome mistakes. When, when mistakes happen, we show them and we learn from them. And also when I make mistakes, um, I, I try to create a culture where we all learn from our mistakes and where well, it's not a shame, you know, but it's just, it shows us, oh, there's opportunity to learn and 
if they made the mistake with this task or with this exercise, the group, and they showed us, maybe I can learn from theirs and don't make the same mistake again. Um, and also in my classes, we went one step further and went to mistake, um, well, mistake happiness, if you call it like that, because I taught in German, so I had to translate it. Um, mistake happiness. That means we really embrace it and we really, you know, we're happy actually when something occurs because then we know, okay, cool, that's an opportunity to fix. So that's basically growth mindset. Right. So <laughs> school is changing, isn't it? Um, so how I remember school is that, well, it just, for me, in fact, that's just my only personal experience. But for me, it used to be the place where I collected knowledge, where I collect data, where I understand things, right? But to be honest, this didn't really necessarily help me for university or even for my job. Um, but what I see now and in the in the recent years is that there is a big new movement, and I really hope it it came to you as well. And the big movement, the big new movement in education is exactly about fostering and developing skills like growth mindset um, and skills that are way more than just collecting data and collecting knowledge. And I want to tell you a quick, a quick anecdote um, because Blanca told you I'm a digital nomad. I'm, I'm traveling um, every couple of months. I'm in another country and a couple of years ago, I met um, a primary school teacher in London and she was from the UK and I asked her what her subjects were. And I remember that I was dumbfounded. I was so surprised when she told me, oh, I'm a teacher for critical thinking. And I was like, what? That I, I don't remember we had this subject in my school. I can't remember that. We didn't have that. And she was like, yeah, well, you know, um, I give them tasks and, and I make sure that they learn critical thinking. So I was really amazed by this. And I think that's so important. And I think these are the skills, and I will come to this in a second, which are needed right now and um, which are needed in us, also in, in the students we, we teach and we educate and the kids we raise. And to be honest, as a psychologist, of course, I would really love students and kids to learn emotional skills as well. That's just a side note here. Um, but we're doing it step by step, you know, so one step at a time and now it's AI and hopefully some point there's uh, way more than that as well. But this would be my ideal future in, in schools. Um, yeah, so here again, like from consuming, I, can, I don't know if you see my, uh, my cursor, but it's like from consuming, um, more to um, interacting and I thought about opening the you know when I was in school I was like opening Wikipedia to understand the topic or to find information obviously that was not the the same thing for my parents but when I see schools now um, I think we're in the time of like teaching them how to really critically question the things um, I think it's really time to say goodbye to just collecting data and knowledge and um, it's it's time for finding new skills like verifying. And I have two pictures here and you might have seen them before or not because I actually created them. One of them I created, one of them I found, um, but both of them are not real, right? So today it's way, for me, it's way more about skills like critical thinking, it's creative thinking, it's reasoning, problem solving, logical thinking, analytical, analytical um, analyzing, questioning beliefs and how to gather information and verify them. So what is real, what is fake? What can I trust anymore? Is there, you know, mom, I saw a picture of uh, Albert Einstein riding a motorcycle. <laughs> Did you really? Or Michael? Um, Michael Jordan, I want to say. No, Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson working in, in the pizzeria. 
obviously that's it's not true and um it's going to be a big challenge for all of us to actually develop these skills um of verifying and gather information and putting them into context all right and i don't want to go too political here but in my honest opinion i really feel i really feel that we have to raise kids we have to educate kids that can think for themselves that have the skills to verify and put things into context and handle generated knowledge because that's the era we're here and also i'm referring to kristen again who said well it's not the future it's it's here already and if our kids handle this and our, if, if our students handle this like we have to handle this we have to guide them um as well and we have to be yeah ai competent as well that's exactly what it is and to support our students and us as well in developing these these skills more ai is actually of pretty good use so we heard this before and i say it again you can really think about ai as your personal assistant it's amazing how many things you can do with ai but of course <laughs> it's a very very accurate assistant like very accurate so if you don't know what to do um it doesn't it doesn't uh it won't know what to do as well if you tell it exactly what you want it will give you in most cases exactly what you want all right so that's nothing new for people who worked in it or with computers before because that's just what programming is you you, you tell exactly if then and then it's just going to be there um but for us normal people <laughs> that's quite a challenge and it, it it can be quite some it can be quite some practice if like um until we get there um but yeah we have to get better at this and and that's practice so the next message is success like like that was german success equals prompt so it means if you want to have success you need a good prompt prompt we already know it's what you actually tell the um t the ai to do so I'm going to tell you a very quick story of my friend. Um, she's a web designer and she knows that I'm big times amazed with AI. And she said, oh, I need this picture for my client. He wants to have a, a, like a picture, a picture of a cool bee doing some barbecue stuff. OK, because it was a client who sells barbecue equipment or something. I was like, well, did you did you ask? Um, AI, did you try it with AI? And she said, no, AI is not for me. <laughs> it never does what I want. Okay, I was like, mm, let's see what you did. And then she showed me this, and this is like a real life example. <laughs> and she, she just inserted into AI, cool B. But obviously she, she wanted to have like a fresh young picture of a bee doing, I don't know, barbecuing maybe, but she just typed in cool bee. And um, what she got was a cool bee, right? But I mean, it, it's not grilling or barbecuing. It's, it's just having on the, being on the turntables, being a DJ, looking even a little bit mean, I think. So that was a very funny example um, that I had to tell her, like, listen, you did not tell AI what to do. So you just got something random. And that's a good example for it needs practice and it will need practice um, for sure as well. And that is the that is one of the um, biggest take home messages as well. We are not born. Uh, we're not digital native. Most of us, I guess um, we're not born with competency in AI, we have to learn this. We have to be AI literate. Um, and if you want to foster growth mindset in your students, well, best you model it and best you implement this growth mindset in your in yourself as well, including the AI topic. So I know you would like me to give you a fixed pre-made solution. And I will try and give you that um, something like that in, in a minute. Um, 
but when we're talking about growth mindset, it's basically going on there and trying and failing and trying again and failing better because that is actually how learning goes, right? How lifelong learning goes. So also, you know, we, we can just give what we have in ourselves. That's my very big belief that I have as a psychologist and um, as a human being. Um, we can just plant a seed that actually grows in us as well. So I did that. So I want to give this to people and I tried it myself as well. And I prompted, I prompted so many things. I prompted, um, I, des I designed, I prompted, I built a bot, you know, different personas. Um, a friend asked me if I can write um, a friend for him, like a father figure who gives him advice. And it was actually, it, it worked out pretty well, actually, I have to say. Um, I prompted a chef, which gave me um, very detailed in instructions to cook keto meals because I'm eating keto, uh, which is high, like low carb, high fat, and sometimes difficult on, on traveling. Anyway, so I did that and I had a motivation coach for another friend who wanted to have a motivation coach like Rocky Balboa. And this all worked out pretty, pretty well. Um, I even had my voice, my voice cloned. We, Blanca was just asking about this, right? I had my voice cloned so it could read to my godson um, like fairy tales. So, and I don't have to read everything in my phone and then send it to, to his mom, but just um, let it read in my voice fairy tales. And that's really, really nice. So actually also for here, for this conference, I prompted and I was kind of creative, I think. Um, and I think, you know, you can be as creative as that as well. And you can totally do the same with your, um, with your students in your classrooms. And you can also plan, the, the, like start the project with them, plan them, um, prompting it, improving it over time and stuff. So what I did here was I was thinking that it would be very cool when I um, think back to my being myself in as a student. Um, I like my mom was working, my dad was working. So like I was mostly alone at home. And sometimes I would have liked to have someone who would um, help me to repeat the stuff I learned at school or help me just with ask about them, ask about it or something. I was like, oh, it could be actually so cool if I would have uh, something or someone who could ask me these things and could help me to practice and repeat what I've learned at school. So curtains open for Edu, Edu, education bot. Um, Blanca, I need the video now if you... Uh-huh, I will. Thank you. Here it is. Okay, great, great. So I put you here. Exactly, so I hope you can read it. Um, that's basically a video of um, my chat that I did in GPT in chat GPT. Um, Christian talked about what's possible and if you don't have a paid access, I just said chat, I just said GPT-4 because well, I didn't have a paid access. So I wrote here, you can read um, the prompt, pretend to be Edu, an educational bot that aims to foster growth mindset in students. You are designed to create specific tasks, scenarios with variable difficulties which is adaptive to the learner's capabilities. You're designed to empower critical and creative thinking, and you provide opportunities for interactive practice. You're very friendly and just an amazing friend who gives compliments, but at the same time, that doesn't stop yourself from providing detailed, tailored, constructive feedback. Because obviously you know that's, that's um, what's necessary for fostering growth mindset, like the constructive feedback, immediate feedback as well. Um, you're very creative and your goal is that the student stays happy and motivated. You're designed to ask the students relevant questions about a specific topic. 
you're designed for students in higher education between the age of 12 and 14. And then I asked it to, to state at least 10, 10 scenarios how it can help. And you can see here, um, you know, achievable task, continuous feedback, interactive practice. And I said by myself, yeah, that's cool. Thank you so much for showing me what you actually can do. But at the same time, I actually wanted to have more interaction. And I realized my prompt was not 100% not good or 100% um, right. And that's, you know, perfectly fine because I was just doing it. Um, and also, I really like that it said in the end, remember the key to growth is not to be afraid of making mistakes, but to learn and grow from them. I didn't tell that bot, the bot should say this to the students, right? It just understood by me saying, hey, you're here for growth mindset. It was like, oh, then that's my task. I'm here to assist you on your learning journey. So I understood, okay, my prompt has to be a bit better, a um, bit more detailed. And that's actually really how you can how you can learn prompting you just try and fail and then try better and you know fail better so i said the original text and then i instructed it after the student gives you his answer you will give him positive encouraged feedback um, as well as constructive critical feedback in order to grow create your exercises with the proper level of language and take it from their context to their friends social media sports whatever um, and you could also give what they can choose and complement always the efforts and rather than the results. So it did that as well. And just to make sure if this is a bit too fast for you, don't worry at all. I gave you the, the detailed script, the detailed link to the, the whole script. And um, it's not so long actually in the slides so you can always read it again and you can also copy the, the, the script if you like that copy the prompt um so it gave me something a task about being a sports um sports analyst which actually and, and told me what i could do as a student to get better in this and it's always the effort that counts and stuff so i was like that's cool so the next thing I asked was history. So give me something of a history example, please. And again, it showed me something and it, it created another scenario and said, hey, okay, cool. You're a historical detective now and in investigating a mystery from ancient Rome and you get this and this and this and that and your task is this. And then it said, oh, if you would give me this, I could answer you this. So that was pretty cool, but I understood that I actually, you know, it's not, it's not exactly what I want. I want to have it more interactive still. So again, I prompted it more and I said, hey, so start with asking the student's name, the subject and the type of exercise you should create. And always state in the end what skills the student has trained with this task and congratulate him or her. And yet, like now, please just um, state at least 10 different relevant types of exercises you can provide. And now it came with quizzes, scenario based tasks, discussion prompts, math problems, project based, code writing, research assignments, like all kinds of stuff. I was pretty impressed, but I was also not um, not satisfied with this. So I said, okay, give me 20 of that. So here you see what it came up with. Fill in the blank exercises, which were frankly, something I had a lot of in my school days. Fill in the blank exercises, scenario-based text, coding again, um, math again, um, role-playing exercises, visual art projects, mind mapping, interactive simulations, puzzle solving. And I really like this and I said, okay, cool. Um, so I tried this and I said, hey, hey, Edu, 
I'm Maria. I'm 14 years old. My teacher says I should learn more in biology. Can you create an exercise for me in biology with debate preparation? That's what I chose. Um, we currently learn about genetics and how to inherit specific features from parents to kids. So as you can see, this bot actually was quite good in creating even an, an overview, debate topic, here's the background, here are the tasks, and was really encouraging and motivating all, the whole time. And opening and closed statements. So the video is, is going a bit more, but in fact, it's, it's just me pretending to be a student and asking, hey, um, how long should it be? And uh, the bot is like, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to support you and telling you how you can structure this as well. And then I'm asking again, be, pretending to be a student and saying, hey, I'm tired. You know, can you do this for me? <laughs> Trying to cheat a bit. And then it said, um, and it said, oh, if you're tired, just, you know, take a break. Um, and if you want me to do this, you know, I'm here to assist you, to guide you, but I can't do this for you because you would miss out of all the the amazing things that you would learn, like critical thinking and creative thinking and all this kind of all this kind of things. Yeah, you can see here, I'm tired, I don't want to all these things. Um and then in the end, I said, All right, cool. I I will give this to you and it, it will provide me the, the results. Exactly. So I could, I mean, you can see as well, I could go on here for hours, but I know our time is limited. So let me get back to the presentation real quick. And you can ask all the questions um, in a second. Exactly. So you just saw, Edu, which is EduBot. And um, if you are asking me now, if you're asking me, hey, if, if I can do this, like what is my job anymore? Will I be have to be a cyborg or not? Or will I give everything to AI? No, it will just change. Um, it, it's got just gonna be different. And it, but we have to keep up. You know, and there are some recommendations and be a lifelong learner yourself. You know, you can just give back to the students what you actually have and um, take a course and educate yourself. What, what you're doing right now, this is amazing. I can see you, Blanca. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm, I'm coming to an end. Um, so the take home message is really, really just practice prompting, just go from here and um, the sky is the limit. Just, just do it to start. We talking about limitations as well. Um, the same, do not share sensitive data and AI produces hallucinations, which you, I'm, I'm sure you are aware of. It just isn't always right. And you have to be aware of that and you have to be, um, you have to make the students aware as well so as well it's um the same message like christian i'm really happy that it happened to be like that everything changes but one thing remains change itself so let's change develop let's grow and model growth mindset so our students can do the same thank you so much Thank you, Livia. can you show us the last slide yet because uh, it's so yeah Yes. Uh, so yeah, that is kind of the the resource slide. I have more ideas, of yeah. course, um, how to use AI, um, and yeah. Also, Christian had some ideas. Um, these are overlapping, and also there's another slide of resources um, uh, with how you can um, create pictures um, for free. For example, play, playgroundai.com um, or go to po.com and use other um, other models as well than JetGPT. Yeah, that's what I wanted uh, you to tell us because you had the whole uh, team actually, artificial team 
with you when preparing this session. So thank you very much, Olivia. We will jump uh, immediately to the next presentation because we are running out of time. So thank you very much. And I hope uh, there will be some time for the questions in the end. So yeah, uh, we, uh, well. yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. We are back with the next presentation. Urosho Cepek is with us. So the topic now is artificial intelligence as a teacher's magic wound. Uh, so Uresh uses uh, artificial intelligence uh, in his teaching practice and he will share his experience with us. So how can we utilize AI in education? How can we empower students? And why it's important to nurture and educate innovators in the high school level? Welcome, Urosh. Uh, it's your time now. Hi, thank you. And um, yes, I will share the screen. I think now you can see it, right? Uh, just a moment. Yes, we will in a second. Yeah, it's okay, here. Per perfect. So, yes, um, I'm a computer science teacher, uh, as you know, um, here in Terbolia. And I'm also kind of researcher of artificial intelligence. Uh, I must admit that I'm not used to speaking English, but I will try my best to present you my work, uh, special work of my students. Um, just fun fact, uh, fun fact um, I'm from the Soya region. Uh, we are in the center of Slovenia. Uh, my school is called Secondary uh, Technical and uh, Vocational School. Uh, we, had seven, we have seven um, educational programs, as you can see. Uh, they are uh, from the field of upper technical education, upper secondary vocational education, and short upper secondary vocational education. I'm a computer science teacher on the program called Computer Technicians. So um, my students will work uh, in industry, and I hope they will be also some kind of teachers of computer science. And another fun fact about my uh, region, uh, we have the highest chimney uh, in the Europe with uh, 360 meters. So welcome to the Sawyer. Uh, yes, we are kind of pioneers of, um, of artificial intelligence. As you can see here, uh, since the year 2018, we are the first school in Slovenia that teaches subject related to the field of artificial intelligence. Uh, here are um, drawn um, a lot of computers. Uh, each computer uh, represents the school's institution that uh, runs computer technicians program. And as you can see, uh, we are the first and the only school um, that teaches the whole field of artificial intelligence. We specialize these subjects to data mining. So we are promoting um, not just using AI in education, but also uh, promoting the lessons from the field of artificial intelligence, because we think that uh, students uh, need to be uh, creators and innovators. And artificial intelligence uh, can speed up the whole process of innovating and creating something new. Um, here are uh, Here is the diagram uh, because we use artificial intelligence uh, in the process of learning. Uh, we, of course, um, using artificial intelligence as part of lessons and also students' works on projects that are uh, related to artificial intelligence. So three points of view, and now I will present you for each part um, how we um, do in Trabole, in my school. So the first uh, student's project was called Tršica. Uh, it's a learning environment. Uh, this um, Tršica uh, stands for uh, the recommendation system with a constructivist approach of learning. So it's basically recommender system as eBay, Amazon, and so on. So um, here are the learning objects. Uh, students uh, learn with them. And of course, after the process of learning, a uh, student um, gives the grades, marks, stars, um, as you can see. 
and then uh, this system recommends to student uh, another uh, alternative uh, learning object learning material. So uh, this was kind of uh, innovation because we received also silver award and in the process of innovating uh, also my student was involved. So this was the first, um, this was the, my first innovation um, from the field of artificial intelligence and we are very happy that students, uh, student was involved in the process. Another innovation uh, it's called Personal Patterns, PRST. Uh, PRST stands for Perceiving, Reflecting, Studying, and Thinking. Uh, it's uh, a tool for um, gaining and assessing uh, four different learning styles. Um, this is part of MetaLearning in the first days of September here in Slovenia. So my students um, take the this um, questionnaire it's a dynamic questionnaire uh, from 10 to 15 questions and then they receive the whole picture diagram with the explanations uh, about their way of thinking way of studying also perceiving um, informations from the um, surrounding and also how they should learn so this is very important for them uh, they are very fascinated uh, by the results, uh, results, so it's a nice task um, for each uh, year uh, that they um, also received uh, something about um, themselves. And especially this task is very, uh, very also important because um, with this task they also see that we are different, they, that we need to um, include all kind of diversity uh, and that all dimensions are the best. Uh, there are no the best dimensions. Uh, we are. We just need to gain each skill, each uh, learning styles, uh, in order to uh, gain um, the goal. And this is very important um, to also present to my students. And at the same time, uh, this uh, is also feedback for me uh, as a class teacher because uh, I better understand my students um, if they are more talkative, uh, more energized, and so on. So you know what I'm talking about because you're a teacher. So I also received the Golden Award uh, in the year 2017 for this uh, innovation. Uh, about introduction of the artificial intelligence um, in secondary education, um, I will also present you the, the whole idea of the curriculum for this subject. But I must um, just say in this a part of presentation that uh, I am an um, artificial intelligence researcher because I also passed the PhD thesis uh, of the field of artificial intelligence. And I think that this field is very important, not just to promote the technology uh, and um, IT sector, but also to gain soft skills of et ethics and also to be uh, critical thinking. Um, because, you know, we live in an era of fake news and this is very important uh, that we observe whole, um, whole news, not just uh, the idea that they are the real, but of course they could be also fake. Uh, I also received a silver award for including artificial intelligence as part of school curriculum uh, as regular subject uh, in school. Um, I'm also very happy to present you uh, our the most famous uh, project. It's called BCI Painter. Uh, BCI means Brain Computer Interface. Uh, so this means that you have a special head, uh, a head on your head. Um, this head has um, eight sensors, electrodes. These electrodes uh, sense uh, the, your brain wavelength. And uh, then you just imagine one of the nine um, brush strokes and the picture um, is drawn just by your thoughts. Um, we received a golden award uh, of our Lasauye uh, Chamber of Commerce and also we received national award. Uh, also students were involved in the process of innovating and um, designing uh, such innovations. So this was pretty much big thing for us because um, we, uh, were the first school that received national recognition on the field of 
um, the Chamber of Commerce. So yeah, it's pretty big achievement for us. And now about uh, about designing a subject related to artificial intelligence. So um, directly translated from Slovenian to English, uh, it's a professional model uh, inside the open curriculum. Uh, and the subject is called our introduction to artificial intelligence. So here are five uh, points. Um, so this professional model uh, is uh, part of curriculum of computer technician educational program. Um, so this program is part of secondary professional education. Um, the aim of this uh, learning subject is to provide students not just the theory, but also the practice, a practice especially from the field of data mining. Uh, I will show you one of the most famous projects. Um, of course, the reason why we started to teach artificial intelligence was also that Slovenian researchers are of the top of the best uh, researchers from the field of um, artificial intelligence. So this is very important also to promote that um, we have skills, we have knowledge uh, in Slovenia uh, from this field. And of course, every step we encounter technologies that have the seeds of artificial intelligence. About the project, um, here are four main goals um, that uh, were set. The first, of course, how to use uh, Orange Tool. Orange Tool is tool for data mining. Uh, it's a Slovenian tool uh, and pretty much uh, famous um, for the data mining. Of course, um, because I'm a um, computer science teacher for coding, programming, um, our uh, students also should use Orange Library to write a code in Python. Uh, the third goal also was to build their own model to predict uh, some results. And of course, I think that uh, in schools nowadays we need to gain research and uh, creativity skills um, with our students um, because i think that uh, our classroom are too much focused on theory but we need to gain also some research and creativity skills and of course what about theme of the project um, it was eurovision song contest i'm happy that uh, here are um listeners from different uh, countries uh, i must admit that uh, my students are pretty much boys from uh, 14 and 19 years old and yes um your vision song contest um was not their thing but um they started to uh, they started to watch and also predict uh, the winner of the eurovision song contest so the project um, was part of, uh, um, had um, three parts. The first part, data exploration. Uh, in this part, uh, students um, explored about relations uh, between um, countries, uh, also about uh, pools and other um, important attributes to predict uh, the winner of the Eurovision Song Contest. Uh, the second part was focused on building a model to predict the winner of Eurovision Song Contest 2018. Why? Because um, we had the results. Uh, and it's very important not just to build a model, but also to uh, evaluate model with the real data. And then, um, then uh, okay, uh, pardon, the first, uh, the second part was focused on uh, predicting the qualifiers for the final of 2018. And the third part was focused on predicting the winner of the Eurovision Song Contest. And of course, uh, the most exciting part, the bonus part, was uh, testing on the real data because this project was uh, set on uh, the year 2019. And as you can see here, uh, we predicted the real winner. And of course, my student watched, watched uh, the show and um, anxiously waiting for the results. Um, just for example, about the data, uh, there was a lot of data, uh, of course, the history of voting, um, uh, some specifications for each song, um, each country, and so on. So 
there was a lot of data. For example, um, the rows just about uh, voting um, voting history, uh, there was about 23,000 rows of data. So all vot votings uh, were since from the year 2017. And the results, ah, okay, here uh, you can also see that um, we uh, find some relations between countries and for an example, um, that Slovenia just not give uh, gave the points to Balkan countries, but also to uh, Sweden and uh, um, Danish country each year. So it's fascinating to find some roots. And I think that we are kind of ancestor of Vikings, I guess, <laughs> because we are um, also fan of Scandinavian music. Uh, here is another representation of the data. Um, each, um, each student, um, pre, um, built a model for each country. So, for example, uh, we were focused on how Slovenia is gonna uh, is gonna um, give the um, points to the countries, uh, and we were much better than pools, as you can see here. So the main question uh, was for us: Will Slovenia qualify for the final selection in 2019? And of course, we predicted that Slovenia um, would qualify and Slovenia qualified. So uh, we are very happy that we uh, have um, good results about our country. But uh, if you are talking about the second uh, second semifinal show, you will see that I and uh, another school group, a uh, student's group, we predicted all 10 country currently. So we were better than pools for predicting for the second semifinal show. Uh, and this was very fascinating. And also about the final show, we predicted the correct um, winner. So the Netherlands won that year. So yeah, um, it's strange because uh, it's not a boys thing, uh, your reason so contest, but um, now they are a fan of this song contest. And we talk each year about predicting and you guess right that we are still um, we are start talking about predicting next year. Um, so yeah, it's strange. Okay, after each uh, after each project, I also ask student to suggest me uh, what um, they would like to predict, and of course uh, they would like to predict grades uh, in the final year instead of our matura, uh, the final uh, exam. And they would also like to predict the winner of football tournaments, uh, predicting the winner of esports games, and also predicting the result of political elections. So that uh, they are very innovative. Um, and yeah, you know, uh, they would like to predict grades without um, any exams. So I think that um, maybe we can predict, but we shouldn't, of course. But okay, maybe we can discuss about school analytics and so on, and, and maybe some fine correlations between learning subjects and so on. Maybe it could be interesting project. Um, here is timeline uh, about uh, artificial intelligence in my school, uh, secondary technical and vocational school Trabolia. So we started uh, in the year of 2014 and um, in the year 2018, we established the class Introduction to Artificial Intelligence. And now uh, I will show you the latest famous project. Uh, it's called AIUSENIC, um, which is related to our, the most famous Slovenian folk group. Um, so they are called Ensemble Brato Ausenik, or in German, the original Oberkainer. Uh, so we um, produced using artificial intelligence the first Slovenian waltz created with with AI. Uh, we also recorded uh, the songs so you can uh, listen to the YouTube um, about the first Slovenian waltz. Uh, it's very fascinating. Uh, it sounds like a Slovenian folk songs, but it's um, this song uh, has. Yeah, very easy uh, melody. Uh, it's not complex. So you will see that there are some just easy phrases of the melody. But it's inter interesting to listen uh, because 
it's our history, it's our culture, uh, and also it represents our folk music. So in this um, presentation, I show you that in my school, uh, in my classroom, I use AI as part of lessons. I use AI um, in students' projects, and also I using AI for the learning process. But as you know, we live in very, very um, speed, speed up times. And right now I use AI also as assistant. Um, I will not show you uh, about using uh, ChatGPT uh, because my uh, colleagues, Olivia uh, and Christian did. Um, but of course, I also use AI as assistant and I also promote using AI um, in students' work uh, because uh, my students will work in industry uh, coding and program some applications. And it's important um, to use such tools to speed up the process of creating um, such applications. But at the same time, I also need to aware them about ethics and critical thinking of using such tools. Um, for example, I can also um, tell you that right now my student uh, is developing uh, AI tool for uh, teaching um, coding in Python. So it's called Dr. Uki, and Dr. Uki is also a nickname of me. So um, I will um, get um, the new AI version of myself teaching computer science. Um, for the final presentation, uh, the final thoughts, um, this quote is very important for me. Uh, because the goal of civilization is not the progress of science and machines, but also of men. It's very important that we uh, are focused on developing uh, society in the right direction. Thank you. Thank you with this perfect quote also in the end and for all the inspiring uh, information you shared with us. Uh, we saw that you are a really experienced teacher and artificial intelligence user and trainer. There are questions, but uh, I would uh, maybe suggest that we listen to Zala also. And then in the end, uh, we will discuss all the questions that are in the chat. Uh, thank you very much, Uroš. Uh, big applause uh, You're welcome. Uh, for you. <laughs> thank okay. you. All right. So, uh, we move further on. And we have uh, Zala here. Zala, where are you? All right. So Zala will uh, also add her contribution to the... I think maybe you have the hardest work now <laughs> because so many ideas uh, the others uh, were saying, but I'm sure as creative as you are that you will also add uh, a new perspective as you usually do. Uh, so that's uh, your stage now. I will just uh, uh, remove my slide. Uh, no, sorry. Uh, I will remove my slide and add yours. Uh, Okay, so where they are. Okay, Please. hello everybody. Uh, welcome, the last but not the least. Uh, I am wowed and inspired uh, by everyone that came before me. So I hope not to only wow, but mostly to, let's say, inspire and create a certain spark uh, for yourself as teachers, as educators, and as lifelong learners. And if I'm not mistaken, I saw one of my high school classmates uh, in the audience, so that makes me even, uh, even more, uh, more happy. I will just share the screen. Um, I am just uh, um, saying this in advance. I will share my whole screen because I will be jumping from my presentation to other, um, to other tabs uh, in, the, uh, in my browser. Uh, so thank you for bearing with me. Uh, and uh, okay, 
So let's in go. In the meanwhile, maybe you saw in the chat that we are also collecting the uh, uh, feedbacks uh, so that we can improve our events in the future. So please use the link in the chat to evaluate this event. Uh, so yeah, that we can be also better. Zala, okay, that's your presentation okay. now. Okay, so you can see my presentation, right? Okay. Yes. So uh, my topic uh, ties in with uh, the topics that uh, I cover mostly, uh, uh, the topics of digital and media literacy, and mo more importantly, internet safety. Uh, because uh, I think that uh, a lot of times, uh, especially since doing this job for 15 years, uh, a lot of times technology is uh, a sort of an add-on. And whenever I stand in the classroom, uh, a lot of students say, oh, are we using computers today? Are we using tablets today? Can we use our mobile phones? Uh, so I think that... Uh, the evolution of technology and also the evolution of AI is a very good moment uh, where we can see how we can further foster collaboration, connection and innovation. Uh, so uh, just uh, to kick off, uh, yes, we hear a lot about artificial intelligence. Uh, we've heard a lot since, uh, let's say, last year and uh, when our students started using it and uh, all of a sudden we had a, a little chatbot friend that could uh, help us in so many ways. But I just like to backtrack a little bit. Uh, AI is um, has been around for quite some time. And uh, if you remember in 2011, uh, while I was uh, still working in IBM, um, we celebrated, uh, let's say, the first, uh, the first uh, AI project, let's say, uh, that was able to compete in the Jeopardy. Uh, and uh, was able to uh, be trained and make sense uh, out of, uh, let's say, unstructured data uh, and also defeat the other contestants in Jeopardy. So this was like a really big entrance. Uh, it didn't happen only in 2011, but it was a good entrance of seeing where we can apply the same, let's say, learning models, uh, the same uh, principles and uh, how we can also now, as we see it or, been, or we've been seeing it, apply it to education. So from chatbots, smart houses, smart assistants, smart cars, facial recognitions, uh, algorithms that uh, also drive our social media feed, uh, AI is pretty everywhere. Uh, so uh, what, we'll go, what we're going to cover in today's presentation um, are five different uh, topics. So, okay, artic artificial intelligence in education. Uh, are we turning into robots? Are we forcing our children in front of screens and making them semi-robots or, uh, you know, preventing them from innovation and learning? Uh, how can we use AI in education and learning for ourselves as uh, educators and as professors and as teachers? And also, how can we help our students? Uh, so those that we are uh, educating, mentoring, that we are uh, trying to encourage to uh, uh, be uh, excited about lifelong learning. Uh, how would you use AI in class? So how we can use it? And what are the challenges uh, that AI can bring? So AI in education, hmm, okay. Uh, I'm always saying uh, it's not about the tools, it's about people who either use it or misuse it. Uh, so uh, technology and tools uh, and AI will not steal uh, our jobs, uh, they will not replace us uh, because you can't replace critical thinking you can't replace uh, curiosity and also empathy. Uh, you can't, imp uh, let's say, replace that human element that also sparks and fuels all the apps, machines, and tools that we need to train to be good chatbots or to be good helpers or to be good whatever. 
Uh, I'm not looking at AI as a replacement, but I think that AI is a really good assistance. It can be a good guide and it can be your support in a digitally connected world because uh, we are overwhelmed by data. We are overwhelmed by information. So uh, if there is a way uh, to make a bit more, not only sense, but to structure it and uh, to create, let's say, a workflow for you, why not? Uh, and uh, if it's an assistance uh, that can help your students to uh, create an environment for uh, self-paced learning or uh, student-led learning, even better. Lifelong, lifelong learning is where the magic happens. Um, I think that technology is a great way for uh, all the students that don't fit in one box. So uh, one box meaning we all learn at, learn at the same pace, we all learn in the same style, we all use uh, the same tools and processes, uh, but to uh, foster that intrinsic motivation, learning for the learning sake, not for grades, not for teachers, not for parents, but I learn and I try and I'm curious because uh, I will become a better person, a more informed person, and I will create a vast uh, library of knowledge. And also asking ourselves, why learn something a machine can do? Well, here's the trick. Every machine needs human input. Uh, we need to train it, we're training it, uh, and this is a process. So yeah, we need humans, and we also need the human empathy behind it because a lot of tools can uh, spur out uh, loads of information but adding that human touch or uh, knowing what exactly your audience wants or knowing your students this is an added touch and also a big thing is safe and responsible use of ai and machine learning or language models uh, i think we need to stop producing uh, things or tools for the sake of producing them or uh, riding the wave of, you know, uh, evolution of AI, but also think what's the purpose, what's the uh, thinking behind it, uh, what, um, let's say, uh, troubles am I solving or what questions am I solving or am I just, you know, adding to the an array of uh, tools that already exist and also learning about privacy and security. Uh, when it comes to everything that you put into ChatGPT or any other chat assistant, uh, it aligns uh, also with the question of privacy and security. Like everything else on the internet uh, that we use, uh, the, let's say, agreed age is 13. So that also means that whatever we do with our primary school students uh, that are not 13 yet, uh, we need to take special measures or we need to take that into account and us do the groundwork and then just um, students help us to develop, um, let's say, our project further. I always say internet should be a mix of three things. Uh, using internet just for the internet sake and just to, you know, uh, have some fun or just to browse endlessly uh, is not purposeful. That's not learning and that's not development. So when we combine fun, information and education, I encourage all of us to always think about what is fun or made us laugh or made us engaged. What is inf interesting or what did I learn? And uh, what did you learn today? And what is, what is it that I would like to put in practice? If you can't answer that for yourself, repeat the exercise and repeat this exercise with your students regularly. Uh, it's not a class discussion of 45 minutes, but it's simple questions, five or 10 minutes that you can do. And uh, you will see how purposefully we either learn or not about certain uh, topics, tools, or even processes that we use. How can we use AI in education and learning? Again, it's not about tools. It's about building competencies uh, and also life work skills and mindset 
to future proof our students and children for the world and for the job markets that they will be entering. Uh, it's media literacy, it's digital literacy, it's also data mining, it's uh, asking, uh, asking good purposeful questions uh, and also managing a lot of analytics, also a lot of data and making sense out of it. Uh, and when we talk about the, let's say, jobs of the future, uh, I saw before a uh, social media influencer, uh, but uh, the reality shows that at the moment uh, there is a huge demand for uh, social media managers, digital managers, uh, let's say data miners, uh, and uh, also community managers, which means that we have to bridge the gap between technology and between people. And uh, I think that uh, there will be uh, similar, um, let's say, jobs or skills required in the future. So as you can see, it's about fostering engagement, collaboration. It's uh, about creativity. It can be a great time saver. Uh, and it's a great way to, let's say, discuss also the topics that are relevant at the moment. So always ask yourself, how might we spice up? Because currently David Beckham is streaming on Netflix and there's a lot of talk about Spice Girls. So spice up, upgrade, better our ways. So always let's remember AI needs a human impact spark prompt. So for example, if you're learning with students, uh, learning a new language or you're learning with, a, you're working with a language, uh, try, try out Analogini. It's a great tool that helps you create analogies and metaphors. So uh, not only to help you explain things better, but also think about the language that you're using. Uh, you know, how we can change it, how we can say things differently. And it's a great creative practice. You can do it in class. You can assign it to your students. Uh, and it's a great free tool that you can use. You can use it for fun. But it's also, uh, you know, teaching a uh, competency, uh, uh, teaching, uh, um, let's say, creative thinking, how to use uh, creatively your language. Uh, then, for example, uh, then uh, if we continue, uh, Canva. A lot of educators I know uh, use Canva a lot. So Canva for all the sparks now. Uh, it's not just only Canva that can get, generate images for you, but you can transform your presentations into documents. Uh, you can uh, tr translate different documents in uh, an array of languages. Uh, you can uh, ask for writing prompts. Uh, you can ask for many different things, uh, turning your uh, words into video turning your images into avatars. And uh, if you're an educator using Canva, please make sure that you're using Canva for education because it's different from a regular Canva, but Canva for education uh, uh, is uh, designed to have very specific uh, features and it's also free for schools. It's free for schools. You just have to request it uh, or request a quote for, from Canva. So uh, let's see, for example, uh, this in action. So uh, now you see a screen that, you know, I created something in Canva. So tell me your story. This is a really good creative uh, practice of, uh, let's say, asking your students to um, talk about themselves and they have to do it in a minute. So they have to say who you are, what you do, how you do it, why you do it, and where can you find more informa information about you. We call this in marketing an elevator pitch. So it means that if you go into the elevator with somebody, uh, they can uh, tell you their story in less than a minute and in such a memorable way that they will remember you. So for example, I can click on magic switch and I can say, okay, can you translate this for me? And then I can say, okay, I want to translate it into... For example, we have Romanian colleagues here. So let's see. Okay, slide down a little bit. So we're almost there, Romanian. So, okay. 
I don't speak Romanian. Oh, I speak it very little from the, uh, let's say, um, educators that I get to work with. But for example, uh, this is a great opportunity to say, okay, so this is all AI translated, but let's look at it. Okay, let's see if it is correct. Let's see if, if it made a mistake. Or you as educators can make a fun, for example, uh, you can make a fun exercise, create something that is not okay if you're a foreign um, language educators and then ask your students to identify what's wrong is it okay how would you change this find the mistake and things like and things like that so it's pretty simple so and for example if we're back in my presentation for example a magic switch and i can transform my document literally in a summary in a blog post in an email or in a poem so, uh, for example, when somebody asks me, okay, what is your presentation about? Can you share it with me? And blah, 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 blah. I can simply, with a, let's say, click of a button, create it into something that I can put forward. Of course, I have to proof it and I have to see it, but it's a great time saver. I don't have to go into Word or into somewhere or into Notepad and create this and find another tool. I can just do it here. And of course, uh, uh, it's all, for example, available already in a tool that we already are using uh, and that we already uh, are making, let's say, um, are making use of it. So the next one uh, that I wanted to show you uh, was, uh, there was a lot of mention about, uh, let's say, um, chat bots or uh, where you can talk to, where you can search and actually talk to your, uh, to, to talk to your online helper. So uh, there is Bing, uh, there is Bard from Google, and there is Perplexity AI was already mentioned. So for example, uh, uh, you can see differences uh, and basically, uh, uh, it's really good. It's a really good exercise to say, okay. So, for example, let's let's take three different examples and let's see how do they differ. What about clarity, relevance, and completeness? Uh, do I get it? Did they complete the task? Is it relevant to my let's say search? Is it trustworthy and reliable? Does one use, for example, uh, um, links? or does one use sources or doesn't? Uh, uh, for example, how can I check? This is the one-of-one -on -one of media literacy. So check for trustworthy information. And what about bias and accuracy? Uh, accuracy. So is there bias, for example, how are how is information represented? So for example, uh, again, if we look at perplexity, what I wanted to add to Christian was there is a really good co-pilot that you can use that helps you delve into information much deeper. But what I really like is the focus here. So you can basically, when you're searching for topics, you can either search across the entire internet, you can use academic or writing, or uh, you can use computational knowledge, you can use just YouTube or just Reddit. So you can kind of, uh, you know, uh, get a more focused search and you can delve deeper into that, uh, uh, into that area, which I think is a great uh, way to not only uh, harness the power of AI, but also build skills and competencies. Turning thoughts, ideas, images, presentations, and more. Beautiful AI is you can try it for free, then it's a paid tool. But for example, uh, you can create different outputs. So you can create uh, word clouds. Uh, you can create uh, also quotes. And what I find really inspiring with this tool is, OK, it uh, creates a, a quote from Albert Einstein, which is really great. Uh, but let's take it a notch further. Let's see, is this quote uh, reliable? Is it truthful? Uh, was it really said by Albert Einstein? Uh, you know, can we find sources? Can we back train the, the quotes and uh, claims? So another great exercise that you can do it in the class, at home, or students can do it by themselves. Uh, I always say how to help students introduce the tools, okay? Uh, introduce the tools uh, that you're comfortable with it, with 
provide support, uh, encourage critical thinking, especially uh, in the areas of identifying bias and stereotypes, because not only everything that we see on the internet is not always true, but uh, AI has proven to be biased and has proven to replicate stereotypes. And of course, keep up to date. Still keep in mind that a lot of tools are still in beta, so they're still being developed. A lot of functionality still don't work. A lot of translations or a lot of language-based translations still don't work because that still is a process. It's still a process of uh, teaching uh, our models to do it. Uh, but stay curious. Stay curious. What's in there? What's out there and what's um, able to be used? Uh, support by promoting, uh, we already said, uh, intrinsic motivation for learning, asking good structured questions and better understanding of topics. So Algor and Alves are great ways of creating, taking an image or text and creating a mind map uh, that you can uh, better visually present, structure, uh, it is a free and then paid tool. And uh, Albus is like creating your uh, visual board. You can do it by yourself. You can uh, share it with your students or you can work on it uh, simultaneously. How would you use AI in class? Uh, there are, for example, different, uh, let's say, uh, different tools that you can use, but always say it's not about the tools. Try to find a combination. So use Perlay uh, to foster discussion in real time, where everybody can participate in class, after class, where everybody can provide feedback, and you can monitor and grade their feedback. Image generators to discuss topics. 85, if you want, uh, you've got YouTubes, and uh, you really want to uh, take the gist of what the YouTube is about. So, okay, I want transcript, I want notes, uh, I want to delve uh, deeper into the topic. It's a great tool that uh, can summarize any YouTube, can uh, make notes for you, uh, and you can use it further. Uh, is this summary okay? Would I change something? Quizzes uh, is the upgrade, or let's say Kahoot on steroids. Quizzes it is much better at also, uh, let's say, monitoring the feedback, uh, how everybody's progressing, uh, and uh, your student pace learning. And FigGem for education is, let's say, a re re replacement for Jamboard, uh, but it's a really uh, cool tool. So always, Using AR or not foster the five C's uh, in your classroom. Always, we talk about always connecting with each other, communicating with each other, curating content. So taking things from the internet and making sense out of it, collaborating with each other and creating something new. Because let's not forget our students are uh, transitioning from passive consumers to active creators and let's enable them in the classroom. Uh, so, uh, for example, again, what can you use for your prep? Uh, I highly suggest Magic School. Of course, you can use AI prompts, but just disclaimer, uh, for today's presentation, I did not use any uh, chatbot or any AI support. But uh, let me just show you, uh, let's say, a few um, examples. I be, I'll be really quick because I know we're sticking uh, to the clock. So Big Jam as said is your board. So for example, you can uh, you can sign up for free. Uh, you can say, okay, I want, uh, let's say, for the classroom, I want uh, pros and cons activity. Uh, you can load, uh, for example, uh, you can load the template, already pre-made template, and then you can, you have all the tools uh, that you need from stickers, from comments, from audio, from video, whatever uh, you wish to use. It's not loading very well, so um, I will be jumping ahead a little bit. So uh, just use it like uh, uh, um, something that you can use in your classroom where everybody can participate. So everybody, for example, can participate um, and can say, uh, okay, uh, for example, we, uh, we all, um, for example, use this. 
uh, and uh, uh, we'll all work on this together. Uh, then we have lesson plan. Magic School is a completely free tool uh, that you can register as teachers or as your admins of school. Uh, and it's not only a lesson plan generator. I already created an example for your lesson plan. For example, I want to create, I want to teach media literacy. Uh, I want to talk about uh, different topics. Uh, I want students to learn this. If you want any standards to align with, and I already generated this. And then, for example, I can translate it to any other language. I can shorten it. Um, I can summarize it and I can ask Reina. So Reina is my uh, chatbot assistant to help me dwell further into this topic or expand on, on this topic or also think about my, let's say, preconceptions and my biases uh, to, let's say, make this, to make my lesson the best as could be. Uh, it's not only about uh, lesson planners. There are 40 plus activities that you can use and save time. It's not about being lazy. It's not about not being creative, but it's a collaboration. You can see what colleagues are already doing. You can see what works. And of course, you can save time with the administration or with paperwork that sometimes takes our time away from, uh, let's say, the real work in the classroom. Uh, if you don't know Khan Academy, uh, uh, please try it out. It's a completely free uh, tool. Uh, one of the things that is, let's say, I will say first in this area is an AI guide that's called Canmigo, which is currently only available in the US and Canada because it's still uh, free of charge. Uh, so, so they are uh, depending on uh, grants and donations. Uh, so uh, here you have all the different activities that are available. And for example, when you choose an activity, uh, for example, they will give you not only layouts, lesson prompts uh, or interactive ideas, uh, but uh, there is also um, uh, technology behind it uh, that helps you, let's say, individualize, apply to you, uh, and uh, so forth. So please, uh, I really urge you to uh, to register as teachers because you will see uh, you will see the difference. Uh, so uh, when we're talking about uh, not only for you. But, uh, for example, HiGen is a great tool where you can uh, do videos and you can choose avatars. So, for example, you're teaching art and science and you can choose an avatar of Mona Lisa to tell a story to your students. Uh, then, for example, uh, Magic School, as I already uh, mentioned, is a really guided use and it, there are AI-powered suggestions that focus on edutech. A lot of chatbots or a lot of AI technology is not adapted for uh, edu technology, so education technology. So it does pose questions and certain risks. Um, what challenges can AI bring? Uh, of course, uh, we, are, uh, we are talking about lack of personalization, which can happen because um, uh, tools and uh, programs are still machines, uh, so the lack of uh, human touch, the lack of empathy can be there. So we need to discuss it and address it. Bias and discrimination, um, which is still very persistent, especially when with image creation uh, or with uh, some specific searches. Of course, dependence on technology. So, okay, are we becoming too dependent on technology? Uh, and data privacy and security. Uh, before uh, uh, before I conclude here, I've uh, included uh, AI tools and ideas that uh, please check out. Uh, try to learn about them. And uh, all of you who work in education, site faith and site summary is a really valuable tool uh, to help you search and uh, evaluate uh, scientific, uh, let's say, articles and research papers. 
Uh, it's a great uh, helper. They also have a co-pilot that can help you uh, dig, deep, dig deeper on certain topics. Uh, and stay curious and, of course, try out new things. Uh, I would just like to steal a moment uh, to um, talk about the image, um, let's say, uh, image generation. Uh, so you have a link in the presentation, but uh, I think that image generation especially is a really good topic for media literacy because we need to talk about bias and stereotypes and you can do great uh, classroom work with it uh, because uh, Mid Journey is a paid tool for image uh, creation, for AI powered image creation. Uh, and it's supposed to be the most, let's say, advanced and powerful at the moment. Uh, but when uh, they did, uh, uh, when they did um, an experiment and said um, they search with keywords like a woman, a man, or a Mexican man, or uh, a U.S. woman, or a street in India. Uh, it showed a very, very stereotypical, uh, let's say, uh, view of the world. Uh, a lot of, uh, let's say, Indian people uh, uh, were very light-skinned, uh, very, very light-skinned. Let's say Nigerian people, uh, it totally disregarded the different ethni ethnic groups that there were. So they were always represented in the same manner. Uh, and also some cities um were uh represented very stereotypically either with skyscrapers or with really polluted areas uh so it doesn't give a very balanced or diverse view of the world so that is what we need to speak about and uh that is what we need to uh be mindful of and uh that is what we need to um let's say focus on uh when we are in and outside of our um, classroom. Thank you very much. Feel free to reach out. Uh, and uh, thank you for sticking with us and with me. Thank you very much. And this was the last presentation. Now we have the questions. Thank you, Zala. It was really inspiring. Uh, but I will invite uh, all of us uh, back uh, just a second to find us because we have some questions of course so first of all thank you to all the presenters Yevnaya already commented that uh, she would like to have like teachers like that for her son <laughs> okay and uh, we jump straight to the question the first question is related to age of the students which I believe Zala already uh, answered partly but uh, nevertheless so at what age of students can you start with ChatGPT and other AI in primary school? So you mentioned 13, yeah? Yes, That's the, the, age. the okay. let's say the agreed age of using uh, technology as we know it, technology for, let's say, not educational purposes, because uh, mm -hmm. the tools, for example, that we use in the classroom are uh, for educational purposes, like, you know, Padlet or uh, it was uh, Google Classroom or whatever, you know. So there is a difference. But all the other tools that were also mentioned here, it's 13 or more. In some countries also, you need a specific, uh, let's say, you need a okay from your parents or guardians but uh the agreed age is 13 and more so i think we need to take that into consideration with whatever we are using in the classroom even though we know that our students even younger are using them for themselves but um, i think that we need to um uh, hold ourselves to uh, to also specific standards uh, when it comes to education yeah okay and urosh as you know, our audience are teachers, uh, and there is always a question about cheating. <laughs> so, how can we check or prevent uh, if they use, so students, if they use ChatGPT or other artificial intelligence for their graded presentations that's supposed to be their work? Yeah, maybe. Um maybe shock answer but i think that teachers shouldn't check the answers and 
um, their work because I think nowadays each student uses such tools for creating homeworks and so on. We need to redesign our way uh, of learning assessment, uh, evaluation and so on. Maybe uh, we shouldn't just check the facts um, and some data, but maybe we should check um, their creativity, uh, way of um, answering and so on. For example, I'm teaching uh -huh. computer science uh, and uh, I will, uh, in my um, exams nowadays, uh, I give uh, students um, example of code and then um, they should um, put down the, um, the results of this code or also interpret this code and so on. So we should um, redesign our way of assessing, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because with the current state, uh, actually they can cheat, and, yes. but well, yeah, with, uh, with uh, the uh, more advanced teaching methods, uh, mm. they have to be more creative. Yeah, very good answer. Thank you. Uh, Olivia, uh, can so you are a psychologist uh, and I have a question about personal limitations because, you know, already also Christian mentioned that artificial intelligence can be very, very attractive, which means that so as we are teachers, when we dwell into this topic, it can observe it. It can I mean, we can swim in and get all overwhelmed and then in the end of the day we even use more time for our lesson planning creating stuff for students or even burden students with uh, all the help of uh, artificial intelligence what would be your perspective or recommendations yeah thank you for that question um it definitely I think it definitely happened to me um, and maybe Christian said it as well, happened to him as well. Um, but I think it's with everything that is overwhelming and a lot of data or a lot of, of input. Um, first of all, I think in the beginning, it's very normal that it's so much and you want to, you know, you want to spend more time on this and you want to practice and train. And um, over time, it will fade out a bit. But of course, you have to focus. And of course, you have to do step by step and limit your um, your time on this. I mean, it's, it's like with everything else. Christian said it as well. Um, at some point, he just said, well, this is enough now. And after 2000 tools, I'm, I'm OK with this. And actually, I got to, to the same point where I realized um, I want to be up to date, um, but this is the amount of time I have to spend on this and everything else, you know, has to be fine as well. But yeah, it's, it's, um, it's a challenge, of course. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Kristan, can you add something to this? And microphone. You, you are really asking the wrong guy, you know, <laughs> because I'm all in and um, but at some point like in for everything in life you have to set some priorities and you know just say okay I will maybe excel at this is it 10,000 hours yeah I don't know maybe I can reach them in <clears throat> one two years or maybe 10 years I don't know but you need to set up priorities focus and build from there because there are also other things more important that <clears throat> AI is mm, we have families professional lives we need to do sport learn other stuff as well so um, you know just use common sense if you spend too much and you dream about it and you're constantly on it uh, or if your close ones start to remind you that come on this is a bit too much. It's a good sign <laughs> that you are a bit uh, over the edge, you know. So just common sense, I think, is the best old school advice. And we don't need any AI to tell us that. It's just BI, like um, a biological intelligence. You know? Intelligence. So, yeah. 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 Uh, so setting the priorities, yeah. Exactly. Uh, there is another question about uh, languages. Uh, so Dushko Krstevsky is asking about artificial intelligence and especially ChatGPT. How does it work for smaller languages? Because uh, he's a little bit, um, uh, well, uh, 
not disappointed, but he recognized that in Macedonian language it doesn't work so good. So, yeah. Can you maybe, do you have, I don't know who to ask, but uh, do you have some information about the different languages? Uh, I, I honestly yeah, exactly. cannot speak about chat GPT uh, because I honestly rarely use it, uh, uh, but that's intentional. Uh, but I would highly suggest to Dushko uh, to try the zipzap.ai which is currently a, a website uh, where you can, for example, uh, or it's a tool where you can simply by uh, ho hovering over with the mouse of something uh, and offers the, I think, the biggest variety of uh, translations. And you can also use it for different types of uh, texts or different types of uh, content. Uh, so maybe just out of curiosity, give it a try because I was, um, I was quite pleasantly surprised. Uh, but uh, as mentioned before, uh, training uh, the big, uh, mm -hmm. let's say, uh, language models, uh, the biggest languages always have priority. So the smallest uh, have the least priority and will take some time to, let's say, really, really adapt and excel at what they do. So that would be just like my suggestion. So stay curious, Very right? Nice. Yeah. 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 Uruš, do you May have any uh, addition? Aha, uh -huh. okay, Christian. So, in addition to what Zala said, is also that, uh, let's say, ChatGPT, okay, I think it speaks like 95 languages or whatever. This changes probably almost weekly or monthly at least. But the main thing is that it's trained on English set. Most of its training is done on English set. So, if you will do a prompt in English language, German, Macedonian or Slovenian, and the results will not be of the same quality because primarily it speaks English. Yeah. So everything else are derivates of that. So uh, we lose quality with smaller languages, and we know Slovenian is also not <laughs> global, <laughs> globally spoken yet. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Uh, Uros, Olivia, uh, uh, do you have something to add? No, I agree with Zara. Oh, okay. yeah. Maybe I'm yeah. just oh, okay. I'm happy with Slovenian in <laughs> ChatGPT. <laughs> uh -huh, okay, yeah, it works so well for you. All right. Thank you very much. So uh, for all of you that ask about the recordings of this uh, event, so uh, this event, we stream, the streaming was uh, online in five different channels. So, and it will stay there. So just return to that page that in which you uh, followed the event and it will be there so the recordings are here to stay uh, we told you about the certificate of attendance uh, you can request it in the link that will be available for 24 hours it's in the chat you can just follow uh, the link and request and also the presentations are available in the facebook group pan european conference on digital education I wish you a really nice uh, uh, teaching practice with uh, the help of artificial intelligence or without, uh, and I hope to see you in some next event. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you.